Welcome to my van build, a project that challenged me more than I could have imagined, all in hopes that with my van camper, I could visit the places I've dreamed of since I was a little girl. Places like Yosemite National Park and Glacier and Yellowstone and the Badlands, a project that pushed me to the edge and taught me so many lessons along the way. Here we go. This is where it all begins. Hey guys, I'm Lydia Keen, and this is my full Dodge Caravan conversion video. Let's get into it. I've been traveling the country and car camping part-time since 2015. I make a living as a traveling artist and model. So I started out my camping journey with my Dodge Nitro car, which I circled the country with a number of times. It had a no-build setup, so I just had lots of blankets and pillows, and it was like my little hippie hollow. So had that car for years, and then eventually Hank the Tank retired, Goodbye to my beautiful little car. And at the end of 2019, I got my Dodge Caravan. I chose this model because I wanted something really simple. It had stow and go seats, which I could take out for storage. It had a CD player, which is key. And uh, none of the electrical sliding doors or buttons. It was just a simple ride with less to go wrong. So as soon as I got it, I started brainstorming. Um, at first, I wanted to go with a no-build setup, just like my previous car. Um, so I got shelves from Home Depot, I got a little air mattress pad, um, some storage bins and blankets, and I also made some really cool Reflectix liners for my windows. After I got it just right, I went on a giant road trip around the country. This was a work trip spanning all the way from Michigan to Colorado, New Mexico, just all over the place. So during this adventure, I soon realized that I wanted something more permanent. <laughs> I called this my trial tour, guys, because I took notes all along the way of the things that I would change. So the shelves weren't level and the foam pad would kick me off at night or just lose air completely. It's not unbearable. And I didn't have a high grade sleeping bag, just like cute frilly little blankets. So it was not practical at all when I was sleeping in Colorado in the 10 degree weather there. Um, but yeah, I learned really quickly. Crazy, I'm so thankful to be alive and to be chasing the sunshine of New Mexico. And along this trip, I did end up staying at, you know, a lot of hotels and hostels when I needed a break or when my back needed, you know, a second to just recoup. <laughs> and though I thought I'd have more success with my no-build van camper, I am like really grateful that I went on this trip prior to building something permanent. And I actually highly recommend going on a short trip before your build if you're new to van life because it really helps you figure out what you personally need and you'll be super prepared when it comes to actually building. So when I finally got back home, some, I think it was like a month and a half later, I took a breath, I took a second to just be grateful to be with my family and to have a real bed and a shower, a good cup of coffee, and you know, I got to say hello to Lake Michigan and just woosah, just chill out because it was quite a hectic trip, but it was, you know, it's gonna be a whole tour video in itself one of these days. I could not tell you how grateful I am to be home. So yes, I was not prepared and I knew I had a lot of work to do to turn my van into a home on wheels. And I was nervous, but I was also really excited to learn more about building and using power tools. So I'm super thankful that my dad was there to help me out. Another thing that I knew was that I needed to do this on a budget. So most of the materials that we used were upcycled from other projects or uh, thrifted. So let's get into the actual build itself. First things first is I pulled out my notes from my trip and I drew up my design for the minivan conversion. I got the layout just right where I wanted it and I took all the measurements needed to get this project going. So next, I needed to remove the stow and go seats so I could have more storage underneath. So will just pop right off now. Be super careful when you're taking these seats out because they are spring-loaded. 
and before I even took out the seeds I watched a whole bunch of videos on it and some guys were saying that you could easily lose a finger if you're not careful and so I was just super paranoid All right, so we got <laughs> the these whole off. time. Mine, uh, normally these would be up right up so you gotta be really careful. We just ended up taking off these plastic panel things and pulling it right up and it popped right out. <sighs> I survived. Still have all nine fingers. No, I'm just kidding. But really, like, be careful if you were doing this project yourself. First step of fully renovating my van. This is pretty cool. Okay, so next step was to build the bed. So I drew up the template. My dad's gonna help me cut this thing. So my dad and I found some leftover lumber that we had from other projects. And then, you know, I wanted something that would really hug into the door frame and span the whole length of the van. Welcome to my life. And we actually made it so that the legs dropped into the stow and go areas, which created all of these awesome little storage pockets underneath. And then we primed it with some old paint until we got it all black and it fit just right. And it's like perfect. Next step is to find the measuring tape, which I don't know what she did with it. Hey dad, where is he? Let's go find him. Yeah. Well done with the cleaning. <laughs> I'm just studying here. I've got to get my book report ready now. I see where I get it from. <laughs> <laughs> So next we found an old shelf in the backyard and I was like, oh my goodness, this could work uh, as my office space. And it was like, I mean, it was messed up. We had to glue the whole thing back together and we found that it fit perfectly next to the bed and would actually help secure the bed in place. So we made that so that I could use it as a slide out work table or for cooking when I open the back hatch up. And it turns out that I didn't use it for any of those things. It's just extra, you know, storage, but still a very clever idea. <laughs> With wood in the wood so, shop, you know. I don't know what I'm doing and this paper is just not the best material to be used. Now after that, you know, I was feeling really familiar with power tools by this point. So I was like, I'm gonna build, you know, a removable side table. So I made my own little template and I wanted it to look kind of more organic and uh, wrap around the shelf a little bit. So I cut it out, I sanded it. I freehand wood burned it with an old uh, wood burning pen until the tip of the pen actually fell off. And so I looked around the garage and I found like an old soldering iron, which is all, you know, it was crooked too. And I used that to finish the job. You feel like summer days to me won't turn the sun rays. I hope that we are meant to be. You say somehow I know your history oh come what may I'm ready picture frames lavender pain they all live here within this romance I guess so this is the general idea with the tabletop is that I just have a knot down here that holds it up on each side but doesn't it look good? Yeah! I just have to dye this fabric now. I'll probably dye it black or brown. So I found some old fabric dye and I thought it would be a great idea to dye the rope dark brown so it would, you know, blend with the aesthetic. I chose Havana brown, but you can choose any color you'd like. Grab um, all of your favorite clothes that are perfect just the way they are. And then you just, um, you just dye them brown. Now we're just gonna cut this here, mix it up with our sour cream. Just kidding. I need a fork. I should have grabbed a fork. It's a good thing we're doing this outside, boys and girls. Oh! 
Oh, I forgot to mention one of the most important parts. This die came with this manual here. Basically, in order to appease the pigment gods to get the perfect vibrancy in your tones, you must do this sacred chant. It's been passed down for 2,500 years now. You might even want to write it down with a, with a pen and paper because it's, it's a long one. And I shouldn't have done that. I was joking with you guys, and now look at what I did. My hand's gonna be brown. And we're back. The sun has parted the valley, and I've left this in here for about three hours over the required time. We are just gonna study exactly uh, how much we really appeased the pigment gods. Come on over. Well, you guys, it looks like uh, I got more of a tie-dye effect than expected on some of these clothes because I didn't really stir it as well. And we've got this here that barely dyed, which was the whole reason that I was uh, doing this process. But I learned a lot of cool, uh, cool effects on accident. So here we go. You know, I failed miserably and uh, <laughs> I had a lot of uh, fun in the process, as you can see. Later, I ended up finding some leather string and used that instead. And it was a lot easier. <laughs> and with all of this good must come the bad. When it rains, it pours. I'm gonna get real with you guys and let you in on the truth. It is not just me having a blast dyeing threads and chanting hymns. So it was around this time that everything, and I mean everything, came crashing down and it was all at once. So my building buddy, George the cat, passed away. 20 years old, rest in peace, George. He had such a long and beautiful life and I grew up right by his side, so he will forever be missed. Then I went through a breakup, things just were not working out with my partner and I. And after that, we're, my dad and I are just super worried about COVID and catching COVID, but also we couldn't get a hold of unemployment, so my dad and I were like living at the very edge. And if that weren't enough, my dad's health was declining at a rapid rate and he could hardly get out of bed. So we were bringing him in and out of the hospital on a regular basis and none of the doctors knew what was going on. I just dropped him off at the emergency again. Send your love and prayers. My God. And you had to drop him off at the hospital because you couldn't go into the hospital during the pandemic. So it was really scary. And there was that fear in the back of my mind, like, will I see my dad again? And I know that's pretty dark, but it was a dark time for a lot of people. So with all of this going on, I continued to work on the van and the van project kept me sane. Like being able to create and build and keep my mind busy while all of this is happening around me was very special. And it was something that my dad and I worked on together. So it just felt right to keep going. And we have a bed. Woo! Woo! So after I finished putting together my makeshift mattress, I finally got a call from the hospital and they found out what was wrong. My dad had an infection and it spread to his blood and they had a cure for it. You know, I found out that we were really lucky to get him in the hospital when we did. So a couple weeks later, my dad was back in action, looking healthier than ever. And my dad's girlfriend and I picked him up from the hospital and just like the smile on his face was so good. Wow, you look much healthier. <laughs> look at that. Hey, we're back in action. Back in action. <laughs> but, you know, all along the ride home, my dad kept talking about how he couldn't wait to work on the minivan again. And he still needed a little bit of recovery time when he got home. And while he was recovering, I was working on making the curtains for the minivan and the project kept on going. <laughs> I was just more motivated than ever. I felt like I had overcome just so many obstacles and I finally got an answer to my dad's health problems and ah, so yes, on to the curtains. As you guys can see here, I have this ancient sewing machine 
and I'm trying to figure it out so I can make curtains for my van. Now, I couldn't find any videos on how to use this machine, so my mom stepped in and she saved the day. She is like a master seamstress, an artist of so many mediums, so we FaceTimed and she showed me the ropes. First thing I needed to do was wind and insert the bobbin. So that's the bobbin right there, this little guy here. It took me so long to thread that. <laughs> okay. I think it's working. Uh, no, 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 maybe. It didn't wind onto the bobbin. It wound underneath the bobbin. And then you do this, maybe. It's working! Next, I needed to thread the machine. And then you thread it as you normally would, which I don't know how you normally would. And then uh, does that. There you go. After that, I needed to prepare the thread and select my stitch. Then I could start sewing. And I failed and I failed and I failed until I finally got it. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's working! It's working! <laughs> I learned how to finish the stitch by reversing it so you can secure the seam. Then I hung up the curtains in my van. I used dowels to hang the larger windows and wire to hang the far back windows and then two really long rubber bendy ties to secure the cab and rear curtains. That way I could kind of form them to fit the space. Okay, so everything was going good, but then I noticed my center console was really low to the ground. So with my dad back on the scene, we built a box and raised it up so I could have some storage space underneath. And this turned out to be way more complicated than I thought because it was like hard to secure it in place, but we finally got it. So this is where I put all the little things that I need close by when I'm driving, and it's super handy. Next is the solar panels. So a few months had passed before I could buy the panels due to unemployment, but it finally came through. Also, my dad was super excited to help with this. So let's get into it. Power is really important for me because I build websites when I'm on the road and I needed enough power to where I could charge my phone, my computer, and be able to use my curling iron to get ready for photo shoots sometimes. So I went with a 200 watt system. Now, originally I was going to go with the flexible panels so I could be more stealthy, but after some research I figured that the hard panels would be more long term with the weather that I have in Michigan, so I ordered my materials, I watched a ton of YouTube videos, and I hooked them up. But what they came with are these adapters here, um, and then this charge controller. And then I had to order the, um, the cables that go from the battery to the charge controller, and then from the solar panels to the charge controller. So that's all different. And let me just tell you that I was terrified and I am no electrician and I'd like seriously watched these videos over and over again because I just didn't want to mess anything up or get electrocuted and <laughs> yeah. So this was a really scary part for me, but I'm, you know, I'm really grateful that I that I did it myself. You know, I learned all about how to how to wire up the panels and it's pretty cool. Okay, so you got the solar panels over there. What's really important is that when you're setting up your solar panels, you want to have them out of direct sunlight so you can protect yourself and the components. Now from everything I've read, I would have to drill into the roof of my car to be able to mount these panels, which I really wanted to stay away from. So I eventually found a guy on YouTube who put up his panels with a no-drill system, which required some 3M tape and then some roof sealing tape too. And his were still strong after years and years. So, I was inspired and had a game plan, and I found this video just in time because I had already made one major mistake. I ordered the wrong mounting brackets, and of course, I had already attached them to the panels. <laughs> Drilling the pilot hole, and then putting the soft tapping screw in, but either way, it should be good. Now these brackets were highly recommended by other RV folks, but you see, I have a minivan, and a minivan has curves, and these brackets were just not flexible. So after watching Hobotech's video, I realized I needed to get some Z brackets, and then bend them using a vice grip so that they would fit flush with the roof of my van. Alright y'all, so now what we're gonna do 
We're gonna put the Z bracket on, and this goes right on through here. We're gonna put Loctite on the thread. First things first. Now, I'm gonna get them up there. It's time to mount the panels. I placed the panels on top of my van. I carefully hooked up the adapters and cables to the solar panels. Negative to negative and positive to positive. And then I tested the system just to make sure everything worked properly before permanently securing it to my van. <laughs> and everything turned out good. It worked and I set those aside for later. Next, I had to prepare the surface. I used alcohol to clean it and then I framed in the area with tape I sanded it, brushed on some 3M tape primer, I placed VHB tape on the brackets, making sure just not to touch the VHB tape in any way, and then I applied pressure to the brackets. After that, I added some adhesive on and around the mount just for safety, and that dried, and then I put some roof sealing tape over that. So that's just to protect it from the elements. And oh my goodness, like these panels were not going anywhere. So, success. <laughs> Next, it was time for power. I was really on edge during this part because I just didn't want to screw it up. One mistake and I could short the system or potentially get electrocuted. So I was just super careful. First things first, I set my 12 volt battery in the stow and go area. Then I hooked up the battery to the charge controller. And it's very important to do this part first. Next, I got green lights, woohoo! Next step was to connect the panels to the charge controller. It's recommended to connect the panels first and then hook them up to the controller. Oh, I've got my electrical tape. I'm gonna take these guys so they're laying flat and I can slot them under this panel. These two remaining cords into my controller here and I have to strip these but what's really important is that you don't want to strip these um, before you before you get to this step because you could get some problems crossing wires. I just connected the solar panels to the charge controller, which is connected to this deep well battery down there somewhere. I don't think you can actually see it. Woohoo! I've got power. After that, I connected the inverter to the battery linking the positive with the positive and the negative with the negative. I also connected a Bluetooth device so that I can see the energy input and output on my phone. Now this, this was a special moment for me. I'm not gonna lie, like after putting up those panels, I felt like I could do anything. <laughs> I also felt this project closing in and there were just a few more steps before hitting the road. And I was antsy, like I had my whole road trip already mapped out and there was one month before taking off. During this time, I often found myself laying in the back of my van, just daydreaming about finally getting to see the places I've only dreamed of. And in a super stealthy soccer mom van, it just doesn't get much more dreamy than that, at least in my opinion. All right, so now just a few more steps. Let's get to the flooring. I used foam pads at first for the floors, and then a bit later my friend gave me some fake wood flooring, which I then cut to fit my van floor. So yeah, works out awesome. After this, we have the window screens. Um, I found some screen mesh in the backyard, and I actually gorilla taped it to the inside of my windows. Yeah, that was a bad idea. <laughs> uh -oh, I'm still off. working out the screen situation. <laughs> On, gorilla tape, you're supposed to be like glue. Hey, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes. Next is the toilet. So I get asked about this a lot. What seems to work for me best is the turbo toilet. It is like a pop-up toilet that has metal hinges and it is super sturdy and it also folds up really small to save a lot of space. I then made a little swing so my van has extra seating, so it hangs right on the driver's side headrest and folds down really easily, and I use this mainly when I want to take on and off my shoes. Now it's finally time to pack my minivan with all of the essential camping supplies. Here are some of the items on my checklist.
So by this time, I was pretty well ready to hit the road, and I had a full schedule of work planned along the way. I cherish the quality time that my dad and I had putting this whole thing together, and my mom for saving the day, as always. <laughs> this project really holds such a meaningful place in my heart, and now it was finally time to see the national parks that I've always dreamed of. In my little mini home, which soon got the name Zava the Van, and I have no idea why. And though it's hard leaving sometimes, I know how important it is to follow your dreams and create your own path and leave the nest and find your place out there or often find yourself right back where you started. And my dad understands that too. And with his health back to normal, it made it all the easier to go. I'm gonna hit the road, Jack. Hey, Don't you come back, back no, no more, no more, no more. No yeah, more. Please come back sometime, oh, sometime. Right, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Take care, I love you. We're hitting the road. We're hitting the road, baby. So there I was, on the road, finally. And let me just tell you, I was so nervous and excited and like fuzzy in my belly because I did it. And I've been traveling the road for seven years now. And this, like this was the greatest trip I have ever been on. Just me and Zava the van and the road. And I was gone for an entire two months, circling around the country and finally visiting my dream places and everything became a reality. All the dreams, all the things that I wanted finally came to fruition and whew, I was beside myself. I camped out in my minivan almost the entire two months and I took all of the back roads when I could and I had everything that I needed in one place. I showered at Planet Fitness, and I worked at coffee shops, and I woke up every day in a new spot, but I still felt at home. I even brought my mom and dad along for the journey via FaceTime. So now, as of 2023, it's been three years since I built my minivan. I've put over 80,000 miles on it, and I really haven't changed much. I added a remote start and a security system so I feel more safe, and to those wondering, my solar panels are still solid as ever. So huge shout out to Hobotech. Thank you. My review is that this was by far the greatest decision that I have ever made. I've gone on more adventures than ever, and this time I was prepared. And you remember my first car, Hank the Tank, right? Well, I traded in those frilly blankets and pillows for sleeping bags and camping gear. I took only what I needed, and I learned some very valuable lessons along the way. The first thing I learned is that you can create your own world. And you know what? People are there to help you, and would probably be so excited to do so. You just have to ask. The second thing I learned is to savor the process. I look back at the building process, and I was so excited that I was trying to rush through it, but now I crave that that sense of creating my own home and putting all of my heart and soul into it and then working alongside with my family and overcoming so much. It's like there are all of these memories intertwined in the whole process and it's really special. Next is less is more. I really learned what I want versus what I need and I learned that I am happiest with less. And finally, I learned that I'm at bliss when I am learning about the world hands-on and just throwing myself into it, even when it scares me. I just keep learning, I keep going, and I keep growing. So what's next for me? Well, I continue to travel. I would love to take my family on some road trips down the line, and I already have some plans in the works. In the meantime, I want to make some minor adjustments to Zava, like adding another layer to the mattress, and yeah, figuring out a, a better cooling system would be nice. <laughs> I also dream of getting another van, a bigger van so that I can have more space, but I'm not in any rush. 
For now, I'm just taking this all one step at a time, and I'm really enjoying sharing this journey with you all. Also, I encourage you to try something new and follow that dream and jump out of your comfort zone because it really can change your life. It sure did mine. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Lydia Keen here and over and out. Oh, and if you guys um, found this entertaining or helpful in any way, if you guys could like and subscribe, that really helps my channel out. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Sleep it all, but night keeps on passing back.